Credits code in the day to give the keyboard a punch. Wow. Then cross, correlate, and a break for some lunch. Wow. Correlate, tabulate, process, and screen. Wow. Program, print out, regress to the mean. And it's old oh, boys, can't you code it? <laughs> Program it right. Nothing ever happens in the In this video, we're going to continue our exploration of importing data into Stata. We're going to look at two new commands that deal with data from an external file that's in an ASCII format. And the difference between these different ways of importing the data have to do with whether the data are in a free format or a fixed format. And I'm going to illustrate that by three different examples. Here's a little program I wrote. I've got three files on my disk. One has got the uh, word space, one is fixed, and one is fixed compressed. And I'm just going to go ahead and execute this command, these three commands, to type out the contents of the files so we can look at them. So when we zoom in on this a little bit, you can see that the gss-space file has the string variable with commas around it. And that's not really required in this case, but if you had strings that had spaces in them, you would definitely have to have them in the double quotes. And then it has our race, age, and education variable after that. Notice that the pattern here is that everything is separated with spaces, or delimited with spaces, if you will, and that strings have quotes around them, double quotes around them. The numbers don't line up. Compare that to the file underneath that. Here the gss-fixed file has the same information, but the pattern here is that not only is everything separated by spaces, but things fall in very orderly columns. The, the gender variable or sex variable falls in columns 1 through 6, and then there's a space, race is in column 8, and so forth. Finally, in the gss-fixed-compressed, file. This is a very typical layout where it's just like the one above but all the space has been kind of squeezed out of it to save a little disk space. This is the hardest file to read just visually looking at it but it's very easy for Stata to read it as long as you have a data map or dictionary of what falls into each column. Again the pattern here is not that there's a space or a delimiter between the variables but each variable begins and ends regularly in the same columns. We're going to go ahead and read in all three of these data sets. You can see I've written this little program that uses three different commands. The first command we're going to look at is an infile command, and you may also notice down at the bottom I'm using infile again. There's two different ways of using infile. One version of infile is for free format data, like that gss-space file, and one is used for fixed format data, and that's that gss-fixed-compressed file. Let's go ahead and run this. You can see that in this infile statement, I'm specifying that the gender variable or sex variable is a string 6. Then I have race, age, and education. And of course, I have my using, which points to the external file. And then a clear, just in case I have data already up and running in my data set, this will allow me to write over it. We'll go ahead and run these three commands. And you can see that after reading in the data, and looking at the describe and then listing that we have our data just as we expected them. If we look at the next command, this is going to read in that fixed format file. The fixed format file again means that all the data line up in very specific columns and in this case they happen to be delimited with spaces but I'm skipping over the spaces and here I'm indicating what columns they begin and end with with these numbers. So that I'm declaring my sex variable as being a string and that it begins in column 1 and ends in column 6. My race column begins in column 8 and so forth. So as long as I know where things begin and end, this is a very good format. And I'm going to click on my execute selection button. And again, it appears no different than before. We import the data, we get a little brief description of what's there, what the data look like, and a listing of the data. Now, the final method is using this infile method when we have fixed data. This is really, in my opinion, the best method for importing data into Stata. It's also the most complicated. But 
you know, you have to figure out the best way for you to get your data in. If you have a data that comes in a very complicated structure, this is probably the command for you. You'll notice one difference in this command. Here, when I have my using part of my command, I'm not pointing to the raw data file on disk. I'm pointing to a file that has the extension .dct, which stands for dictionary. So the major difference between this particular import method and all the others is that you have to develop or create a data dictionary, or I think of it as a map, that points to where on your hard drive the data are stored, and then within that file, where the particular data bits and pieces are stored. Let's go ahead and look at our data dictionary. The data dictionary starts with the word dictionary and then it has using and here's where I'm pointing to the raw file that contains the actual data. The end of that first line there's that open bracket and then I've indented just for looks so this appears a little bit easier to read and I have the information that lays out a map or a dictionary of where all the data pieces are. String 6 is attached to the sex variable sex variable has a format of percent %6s, so state is now being told it's six characters wide. And I'm attaching a variable label of respondent sex. I'm declaring the race variable to be a byte variable. If you look under storage types, help storage types, you can see all the different ways we can declare data. And we want to use the most efficient storage type for our particular kinds of data. In this case, byte is perfect and it's going to be formatted using percent %1f. So it says right after we get through the six characters of the string variable, the next character will be one byte wide. And then we're going to attach the variable label respondents race. The next two variables, age and education, are also byte variables declared as bytes, but now they're being declared as being two columns wide. That's the percent %2f and then they have a respective variable label respondents age and respondents years of education. I don't need this file open because my command itself is going to point to this file and if I've given the directions properly and mapped out my data properly it should work just fine. Let's go here and run the in file first. That looks pretty good. You can see that the output here it shows the in file it shows me the dictionary and that five observations were read. Now we'll describe the data. And it's just as we suspected. We have a string variable and three bytes. And now we also have variable labels, which we didn't have before. And just to confirm that what the data look like, we'll list them out. Now this command looks very simple the way I've used it, but the truth is it can be very complicated. If you get a data set that has household data with individuals in it, so there's different numbers of different lines, different numbers of records for each household, this is definitely going to be the way you're going to want to import those data because you're going to have to very clearly specify where each record begins and ends and what's contained within each record. I hope you found this useful, and as usual, if you have any questions or comments, please send me an email or give me a call, and I'll do my best to answer your questions, and I'd certainly love to hear from you. Edits code in the day to give the keyboard a punch, wow. then cross, correlate, and a break for some lunch. Wow. Correlate, tabulate, process, and screen. Wow. Program, print out, regress to the mean, and it's old boys, can't you code it? Put, program it right, nothing ever happened.